Welcome back to the second part of this revision video. And we'll only be looking at question four to question five in this video. If you're on YouTube, don't forget to hit that like button and to share these videos. Name two places in the DC machine where iron losses occur. The armature core, field poles, and pole shoes. Make a neat, fully labeled sketch of a simple thermal type overload relay. Now, there are four main parts to the thermal type overload relay. We have the heating element, the contacts, and the bimetal strip. And then we have the control knob, which is there to control the temperature. Now, under overload conditions, when current exceeds the rated value, the bimetal strip will heat up, it will bend and trip the contacts. During a brake test on a DC motor, the following information was recorded. So this is the direct method using a rope brake test. The effective load on the brake drum is 310 newtons, which is the effective force, which is the difference between the force of the weight and the force of the spring. The pulley diameter is 250 millimeters. Now to convert millimeters to meters, we divide by 1000. And to convert diameter to radius, we divide by two. The speed of the shaft is 875 revs per minute and the supply current of 17,5 and the supply voltage of 220. For the direct method for the efficiency test, it is two times pi times the speed multiplied by the effective force, multiplied by the radius, divided by 60, the supply voltage, and the supply current. When we substitute all those values into the equation, we end up with an efficiency of 92.2%. State what is meant by the following terms with regards to a sinusoidal waveform. To define cycle, it is the time taken to complete one waveform. For frequency, it is the number of cycles completed in one second. An alternating current is represented by the following expression. So here we're dealing with the letter I, so it's for current, and it's still a sine wave, the maximum value of 13,5, and the angular velocity in radians per second is 376,991. Don't forget to convert radians to degrees, we multiply by 57,3. Now to calculate the frequency, it is the angular velocity in radians per second divided by two, divided by pi, and that gives us 60 hertz. To determine the average value, it is 0 0.637 multiplied by the maximum value, and therefore the average value is 8.6 volts. Now to determine the instantaneous value after 0 0.75 milliseconds, to convert milliseconds into seconds, we divide by 1,000. Don't forget to multiply by 57,3 to convert the radians per second into degrees. 13,5 is the maximum value sine for a sinusoidal waveform. And then we have our phase angle in the brackets. And we end up with an instantaneous value of 3,767 amps. Thanks for watching this video. And uh, stay tuned for more videos that will be coming up. Thank you.